So, here's what we're gonna do today. Um, so we're gonna do something in terms of this car. Uh, we're trying to do matching back plates, do a tire texture, uh, getting the rear lights, and doing it all in Keyshot 6. So first of all, let's go inside. So I already have prepared the car. Um, we will go over how to do these rear lights, how to do the tire specularity bump maps and whatnot, and how we, can we set the angle of the perspective uh, uh, with a simple plane. For example, let's go into Edit, Add Geometry, and do a plane. So, here we have a plane. So we're going to move it and scale it. We are going to keep it quite small at first. Let's say 415 units. 457. Now, we have reference points. We have this line and this line. So this is the perspective that we're trying to match. As you can probably see right now, it's not matching. Um, so what we're going to do next is we are going to get going to the camera settings. And preferably do it in performance mode if your computer is not that powerful. So we are in performance mode. So now we're going to go into perspective and try to match the lines as much as possible. And here we can see that we're matching quite perfectly. So it's all about getting the plane and setting your lines straight. That way you can say that your perspective is in the right location. I mean your perspective in terms of the camera is is manageable. Um, that's basically it in terms of how you can set up your perspective if you have square floors and whatnot. Instead of like going into the much perspective, uh, uh, much perspective tool which you can use in the environment tab as much perspective. So you can do it all with a plane, and it's pretty simple, in my opinion. Next, we're gonna go and slide it down a little bit. Just wait for it to load. Since I'm, I have quite a lot of Chrome tabs open at, at this point, so it's gonna take some time. Here we go. We're loading the environment since it's around like 500 megs. So we are gonna get the angle right that we want to have. Now, second thing, so we don't want a blue plane. So we're gonna give, go and use it as ground. So that will give us deep shadows. And we don't wanna have any kind of outlines. So we're going to clip the geometry so that the tires sit flush with the ground. As you can see, it's ray tracing here, but it's not racing to ray tracing here. The problem is the plane isn't big enough. So there's a little bit of shadow going on here that we want to achieve. And we're going to scale it up a bit. Do it in position. And that's perfectly fine. Um, see, it's right, uh, the rear tire and the front tire isn't quite, quite right. So, a little bit upwards, and I think that's golden. So, in so in between, we're gonna set the camera. We're gonna name it as primary. Dang it. Exactly right, and we're gonna save the project as well in between, just that we don't lose any kind of essential data. Now, one thing to keep in mind is with the wheels, since you have wheels turning, uh, I mean rotated, 
see there's a little bit of angle of attack this is what cars usually with this kind of a angle of the steering usually do they tend to angle on the inside tend to angle a little bit into the car and on the top out of the car this is usually what happens in the, with the steering rack so next time when you do do want to keep it realistic in terms of it then instead of like just being like this which is perfectly vertical and horizontal you don't want to do that well you might want to do it but still keeping giving it a little bit a little bit, bit of an angle keeps it real same goes for this one see it's not perfectly vertical so same goes for here as well so but this in terms of the inside wheel is opposite so top needs to be more inside and the lower part needs to be more outside okay so we got that straight as well um, and also your logos try to keep them as real as possible just don't use chrome or gold materials in terms of the uh, in terms of the logos if you have something called complex just as that such as the Alfa Romeo logo now uh, let's go into into detail in terms of tires so I have proved my workflow uh, a little bit in terms of uh, making the tire as real as possible with some specularity maps, bumps maps, and refraction and whatnot. So we are gonna isolate it and we're gonna put it as gen center and let's go over it a little bit in the material editor. So, what have we done? It's basically a plastic, uh, plastic material that we have edited quite a bit see you can see that this part uh, the tire texture itself is quite refractive what it is is really a specularity map used before I just used this bump map but now I'm using specularity as well so that's the main thing that shines through also the lower material is somewhat shiny um, or matte uh, Kind of, kind of matte, but kind of plastic and whatnot. If we were to were to turn this specularity off, now we just have the bump map giving our, or I mean the primary material giving us the specularity and shininess. But it it looks kind of okay, but we still want to give it some contrast in terms of the tire bump map. Now, also what we have done here is we gone into a little bit more depth in terms of uh, the tire texture like a little bit of granul granularity um, some kind of uh, smudges and whatnot and these are all done with labels so we have four labels as you can see here um, this diffuse map is going on this plane over here which is a vertical plane now this plastic material is these lines you see on top see they're kind of refracting as the light hits it and this is what I used as a specularity map now I have made it so that the brightness and the contrast kind of match to the real real world scenario so they're not really that shiny but as you can see you can give a little bit of detail into this into the tire itself when using some kind of a specularity map as well. Also, there's dust and other granular particles that I have done. As you can probably see, the mapping type is cylindrical. So, when we go into the mapping tool, first of all, it's on this, it's on this uh, rotation here. Um, and what the opacity map does over here is if we turn it off entirely, see, it all becomes on this plane. Everything you can see. It applies to this angle and whatnot. But since tires will wear from this line, not so much on the side, uh, on the rear ones at least. So we didn't want to 
put some kind of granularity and dust and wood particles on this on these sides so we just use opacity map to just kind of limit it uh, you're gonna have to play around with these settings but ultimately what your goal is you want from this point to this point is where your materials will apply as labels from this point on it's basically just going to be black uh, with a little bit of specularity and whatnot but not too much so that's how you attack that it's it's pretty self-explanatory you're just going to have to google tire uh, tires themselves when they're worn out or a little bit worn so you can get the idea on how it works but it's just it's um, it's my approach how I do it these days instead of just going with bump map and just setting the roughness uh, on the plastic material and whatnot so yeah here it is like this go into labels as well you can see that all all of these are cylindrical and that's pretty much it in terms of tires now we are gonna go into the whole nine yards in terms of rear lights so we're gonna I'm just gonna show you how it would look like as you can probably see there's quite a bit of depth refraction going on there's some roughness there's reflections and there's scattering and whatnot. How you can, how people usually do is they just have some kind of geometry and they basically add a material, let's say emissive, for example. They turn it to red and they call it that. That's basically a rear light. The other thing they do usually is area light diffuse. Wait, wait, wait. You usually use area lights. I mean, it got, it shows some refractions and whatnot. Uh, within the enclosure of the light. But seriously, it just looks flat and unrealistic. Especially if you go into here. That's not a rear light. That's just some doodle <laughs> hanging in the middle of the rear in, uh, light enclosure so we don't want to do that we want to have it like this a little bit of depth ref refraction going on scattering and some little bit of roughness to make it as real as possible so how can we do it so what you can probably tell is I've split the geometry in two in 3ds max uh, prior to uh, importing this file I just edited the polygons within the slide. What I did was, as you can probably tell, I cut out the inside of the outer geometry. I split it in two. So I have a top geometry as the standalone, and on the bottom, I have an emissive or area light diffuse plane that I can add materials to, and then it shines through the top geometry. So what's happening here? Uh, what we have in the material editor is an advanced material with diffuse as black. Specularity, uh, the refractions are kind of pinkish, sort of reddish. Then we have no roughness and then the refraction is so that we can get some shine going on on top of the geometry to give us some reflection uh, off of the top geometry part. On the specular transmission is this is the limitation what sets how much light will pass through the geometry so the higher it goes the less it will shine through the lower it, uh, oh wait was that the other way around yeah the brighter it is the more it shines through the lower it is then we turn into uh, basically a metallic material so this sets your amount of light that goes through the top geometry to reach the bottom light 
and for good reflections and whatnot we're just going to use basic settings here uh, glossy samples I should probably keep it at 6 turn Fresnel on because Fresnel allows some light scattering through the light instead of just bouncing off uh, back to the enclosure of the light and then shining through so that's how I usually do it so what we did learn from here is how can you match perspective with just a plane uh, to a backplate how you should do your wheels how you can edit your material to make your tires look kind of realistic and what not to do in terms of rear lights and uh, keep your car logos as real to the as real as possible to the end uh, the real life car so you won't run into people saying in the constru constructive cri criticism uh, side of things that oh you messed up your logo these are things that people eventually will look at and if there's something wrong <laughs> you will get a flag for it so this is a quick quick um, tutorial on some of the things that I have improved on my workflow and perhaps you can use it in your your workflow as well so next time uh, I hope that you have you can improve your renders upon this information that I have just given you uh, one thing to keep in mind is if you do have these lights shining through and if you decide to put red glass on top of these uh, uh, on top of these lights then your orange layer that's fading to the red one will not show through because you're basically canceling out the orange with your red top uh, top glass so try to keep it in in the kind of white orangey uh, color so you won't end up with weird looking rear lights if you decide to split the geometry in half prior to importing and that's basically it uh, I hope that my information this time has helped you out as well um, happy rendering and stay tuned for more for presumably coming in within like three or four months until I have time again to do another tutorial so yeah uh, I hope you learned something and as always I'll, I'll, I'll try to see what you guys come up with I've seen some pretty good um, uh, end results in the Keyshot forum in the past couple of months uh, from people who have said that my tutorials have helped them so I hope that this is the case uh, same case as it was in the past so keep on doing what you, would do, what you were doing and try to improve upon it every day you should learn something new so I hope this helped Bye.